The modified shoulder splint is used to immobilize shaft fractures of the humerus. In this presentation, the application of the modified shoulder splint will be demonstrated. The objective of the exercise is to understand the correct application of the modified shoulder splint. The modified shoulder splint is indicated for fractures of the humerus shaft. The x-rays demonstrate fractures of the humerus for which a modified shoulder splint is indicated and can provide a satisfactory outcome. It should be noted that shortening of 1 to 1.5 centimeters, some rotation, and angulation of 15 to 20 degrees are acceptable. However, the angulation must be aesthetically satisfactory. To apply the modified shoulder splint, the following materials are needed. A stockinette or tubular gauze bandage, cotton wool for undercast padding, scissors, a rest-on pad, or alternatively, orthopedic felt made from compressed wool and used for extra padding at the wrist, plaster of Paris bandages, which come in rolls of varying widths, plaster slabs, generally five layers thick and available in differing widths, a soft cotton sponge bandage to secure the splint at the upper torso, and water or another wetting agent. The water should be tepid or lukewarm with an ideal temperature of between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. It should be noted that colder water or a bandage that is wetter will allow for an increased working time, while warmer water or a bandage that is drier reduces the working time. The patient should be seated. The patient is told that any feeling of pins and needles or signs of a pinched nerve should be communicated immediately. The splint is applied with the shoulder in internal rotation and the hand in front of the body. The stockinette is applied and a slit is cut to accommodate the shoulder. The stockinette may be taped in place or held by an assistant. The elbow should be flexed to 90 degrees. To help reduce pressure on the ulna, the distal border of the modified shoulder splint lies at the wrist. The cotton wool is used for undercast padding. It is gently wound once around the wrist, then towards the elbow with an overlap of 50%, which creates a double layer of padding. To avoid constriction, the edge of the cotton wool should not lie within the crease of the elbow. Rather, it should be wound around the elbow, as demonstrated here, and then be continued as far as possible towards the shoulder, up to the axilla. Strips of cotton wool are used to pad the shoulder. They're held in place by the assistant. To ensure that the shoulder remains immobilized, excess padding should be avoided. However, additional padding is applied to protect the bony prominences of the elbow. If available, a rest-on pad is applied at the distal border and then cut to length. The patient should be asked to verify the function of the radial nerve by extending the wrist periodically throughout the application of the splint. The first plaster bandage is wetened. The excess water is removed by squeezing it. The bandage is applied beginning at the distal end and then progressing towards the shoulder in the same manner as the cotton wool.
The first plaster slab, 125 millimeters wide, is wettened. The excess water is removed. Beginning at the axilla, the slab is passed around the elbow and over the shoulder, forming a U. The flap at the elbow is smoothed down to provide extra strength. A second slab, 100 millimeters wide, cut in two parts, is applied both to the front and back, forming a second U. The splint is molded as shown here. The assistant applies pressure on the shoulder with one hand. While two hands are used to apply anterior and posterior pressure, The assistant's second hand applies pressure medially. Even support at both the humerus and shoulder is ensured by molding with the hands until the plaster has become completely dull, indicating that it has set. Often with an extremely unstable fracture, any loss of reduction can be felt while molding. The ends of the stockinet are now folded back at the wrist and shoulder. A plaster bandage is applied, beginning at the wrist, to secure the stockinette. It should be verified that the cast is not pressing into the axilla or the axillary nerve. It can be seen that the upper end of the cast is not fixed in place. To secure the cast, a soft cotton sponge bandage is wound around the upper torso and fastened with either a knot or a safety pin. An additional plaster bandage is applied to secure the cotton sponge. and is molded as shown here.
the extension of the patient's wrist is checked to ensure that no nerve damage has occurred while reducing the fracture. The application of the modified shoulder splint is now complete. The reduction may be verified with an X-ray.